Let's chat about my childhood hero, Sonic the Hedgehog. I still admire his free-spirited attitude and good nature in the face of hardship. So when Sonic stars in a really lousy, stupid cartoon episode, it doesn't just demean Sonic, it demeans me and many others on a personal level. Sonic has seen a ton of reimaginings over the last 30 years, so let's chat about the most notoriously bad of them all. Let's check out the top five. Worst Sonic Cartoon Episodes Just a heads up, I wanted to talk about Sonic Underground on this list, but honestly, the show is just too dull to bother putting on the list. And Sonic X is just... well, four kids Sonic X. And I think Sonic Boom is pretty serviceable nowadays. Number 5 Sonic Christmas Blast A Sonic Special I actually got this episode as a present for my brother Raz on my 8th birthday. Unfortunately, neither of us knew the calamitous disaster that Raz had inadvertently unleashed. You see, this Christmas special turned out to be the ugliest lump of jet black coal ever left in a Christmas stocking. The episode starts with Sonic talking to Princess Sally, but since they were too cheap to even hire a voice actor, they just have her be mute and imply everything through pointing and glaring? Okay. Don't say another word. Our Christmas deal, no presents. And then Robotnik takes over the city as Robotnik Claus. Yes, that's actually what they call him. And he's Robotnik Claus now, so he can get everyone else's presents on Mobius. That has to be the most lame-brained, cheesy plot I've ever heard. And worse yet, there were somehow even less voice actors to voice the roles than usual. They went from their usual massive voice cast of four whole people to two voice actors? To voice like 20 different characters. Seriously, I think it's just Jaleel White and John Baldry in there. The voice actors of Sonic and Eggman. But Dodge Robotnik Claus, we already built you dozens. I want hundreds. The animation looks somehow even worse than Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog usually looks. And the plot holes are so gaping that you could drive a mad truck through them. I mean, they're building Robotnik lots of chimneys so the people can come down to give him presents. How, guys? How do they make their plot so stupid that even not trying would produce a more coherent plot? But it gets even worse when Sonic meets the real Santa Claus. But it turns out Santa is a bit of a downer. In fact, he's a real defeatist killjoy. There's gotta be something we can do. No, Sonic, it's hopeless. Christmas can't happen for anybody else. Robotnik Claus has destroyed it. Nah, I'm just messing with you. Though that would be a good ending. So Santa makes this really flimsy pretense that Sonic can deliver all the presents by gaining super speed because of the plastic looking ring he's wearing. All by Sonic just doing a bunch of random junk Santa asks him to do. Super speed? Extremely super. But to gain that power, you must master all of the impossible challenges. These trials sound much more like Santa's just making up crap as he goes. Seriously, Santa, you're telling me the ancient cave pictographs had snowboards on them. So Santa gets Sonic to snowboard a bit and ride a bicycle and bajing, he has super speed. And now he's Sonic Claws. It's almost like Santa just made up a bunch of garbage to occupy a three minute time slot. But now apparently Sonic is the new Santa? Now you're Sonic Claws! That's right, kids. It's not Santa coming down your chimney. It's Sonic. You see this idea in so many Christmas specials, yet somehow it feels even stupider here. I'm almost impressed in a way. How the hell did they manage this? I guess where others fail, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog will always find a way to make it lazier, more idiotic, and senseless. Sonic Satam, The Odd Couple. Uh, I really don't like these episodes about a person's home being invaded. And the most tragic part of all? This time, the invader is my hero Sonic. He's being the lazy lout this time. So it looks like we're gonna be roomies. Barging in on Antoine's home to live with him, and sending him into a fevered nightmare of insanity at Sonic's messiness. I originally watched this one at about 11 years old, and it honestly felt like I was watching the image of my hero crumble before my eyes. Sonic is such an inconsiderate mess of a roommate. I mean, he tries to cook Antoine dinner, which is nice of him, but his slob-like antics end up leading Antoine to breaking down crying. 
No way! I saved you a dog! Uh, he eats like a pig, leaves a massive mess, and belches randomly. Don't get me wrong, I'm not obsessed with manners, but just some basic cleanliness when you are a guest would be nice. He even trashes the house in his sleep, driving Antoine even further round the bend. He then blames Antoine and tells the other freedom fighters he lives like a pig. Now, I'm not spending another night with these. Not only is he totally out of his tree, but he lives like a pig. Ending with a tree falling on Antoine's house. Ugh. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Robotnik. I'm Super Robotnik. Ah, there's few cartoons out there as refreshingly terrible as Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, wildly not giving a stuff about animation, story, dialogue, or writing. In fact, here they just rip off Superman. You see, in case the title card didn't give it away, Robotnik becomes Super Robotnik. How? By falling in a bucket of laundry detergent and floor cleaner. I am dead freaking serious. Now, Robotnik can fly, he's indestructible, has laser eye vision, super hearing, you name it. And what does Robotnik do with his newfound superpowers? Well, he steals candy. I just stole candy from 4,822 babies! Then he invites Sonic to a competition in climbing rings. A sort of Mobius Olympics, I guess? So apparently Sonic pumps himself so much in 12 seconds on an exercise machine that he can now apparently match Super Robotnik. What? Just what? What kind of insane logic is that? Even Goku took a few months in intense gravity to train to fight Frieza, and it turns out Super Robotnik's one kryptonite, one true weakness is his butt. So we watch Scratch and Ground to remove attack from Super Robotnik's butt. Truly, I can say that the golden age for animation was not brought about by Deke. We'll need the butt pliers! <laughs> butt pliers! Super Robotnik is a Sonic episode that hits that pinnacle level of stupidity that only Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog could manage. But once again, I am astounded how creatively terrible this show can be, yet very entertaining at the same time. <laughs> Sonic Satam, the pilot. You know that truly dark, evil Robotnik from Sonic Satam? The one who callously tortured, roboticized, and stole the minds of every sentient creature he could get his psychopathic grips on? Well, now he has a pink throne room and a tiny metal chicken named Cluck. Oh, what is it, Cluck? Does him need another head adjustment? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. He is Sonic, and he's uh, jamming. But jamming is probably a strong word for what we just saw. That was, in fact, Sonic's attempt at wooing his future wife. It's like the whole episode is based on showing how 90s extreme Sonic is, giving us such classic lines such as, Softer is for pillows, for ice cream. Music has got to move. It's got to be pedal to the metal. Somehow they made this pilot even more cheesy than your average substandard adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog episode. But I think they had a shoestring budget, as this was their initial pitch for the show. The weird part is, in the very next episode, the whole art style and tone changes. We go from a pink throne room with a robot chicken named Cluck to torturing rebels in the first five minutes of the show. And who should be the other star of this episode but Tails? Back in the 90s, Tails wasn't the well-spoken inventor who could fly that we know today. No, he was truly and utterly useless in every single way, serving absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Tails has even given such classic sidekick lines as... It's clear the writers and animators were still trying to get the tone right for this one, uncertain of whether it should be another Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog tune ride or a dark drama about the industrial world's rapid destruction of nature and the enslavement of anyone who can stand against an all-powerful dictator, resulting in a pilot episode that is struggling under the weight of an identity crisis. But at least it was what gave us Sonic Satin. 
And before we get to number one, I just want to give a quick honorable mention to my favorite Sonic episode, Sonic Breakout. Please excuse my voice, by the way. This episode is just packed with so many unique scenes and moments. And the episode is all based around Robotnik responding to fair use. No, really. And his response, of course, is throwing the parody artist in jail. So only a slightly better response to fair use than Fox. <laughs> Fortunately, Sonic's there to bust the artist's sketch lampoon out of Robotnik's new Super Fortress. This is probably the most smooth, coherent, stylish, and fast-paced episode I've ever seen in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and I actually recommend it. Anyway, on to number one. And without a doubt, the number one worst Sonic episode is... Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Hero of the Year. We're here to honor you as Hero of the Year! You may be asking yourself, how does Deke Animation's Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the laziest cartoons on Earth, somehow make itself even more lazy? Well, to start with, don't even bother finishing half the animation for the episode. Just release it even more half done than usual. Then turn this soiled, decrepit pile of junk into the worst clip show ever. You now have Sonic, Hero of the Year. Where? Where to begin with this episode? Starting the episode with continual loud, annoying car alarms in our ears, bad jokes that don't even remotely work, and a minus 100 animation budget, even by Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog standards. Hey look, it says sus. Probably because this episode's a little sus. Ha <laughs> ha! High five, anyone? Anyone? All the other Sonic shows at least make an attempt to remain cohesive in their story. To try, at least a little. This, well, there's a completely hopeless story about Sonic being nominated for Hero of the Year as a flimsy pretense to start the dreaded clip show. What's going on, little bro? People love you, Sonic, and they're here to prove it. But not a good clip show. Not even an average clip show. No, these make Simpsons clip shows look like pure genius. It's even weirder when you think about the fact that clip shows are usually supposed to catch you up on the best moments of the season. That implies that someone on the staff was actually proud of what they'd done in this show. And here I thought the budget of this show couldn't possibly get any lower. But a Deek clip show must have a minus a million budget, where they have to pay the audience to watch it. Even as far as clip shows go, the old footage is just clumsily and flimsily mashed together, with little to no coherence. And for some reason, Robotnik is unusually mellow. Like, for the whole episode, he's just chilled. It's like he suddenly became a meditative Zen monk. And best of all, you're both being so modest. Oh, gee. So then the clip show finally ends with Sonic being sunk in a submarine by Robotnik. Hooray! Wait, no, now Eggman has to have a celebration clip show dinner. Because he's villain of the year? Oh, come on, guys. Robotnik! Robotnik! Ra, ra, ra. You've got the budget to hire Long John Baldry and Jaleel White. Don't you have the budget to spend more than 40 seconds on a script? I can't believe it! Robotnik may have finally won! In fact, at one point, they don't even bother to animate a background. It's like at this point they just went, you know what? We're at episode 60. We've already obliterated our careers enough that there's no real point of even remotely trying, is there? I normally love how stupid this series is, but here, I can't even say they didn't try, because them not trying is normally funny. In this, they just didn't. However little you can imagine they normally do, they just did even less. And at the 15 minute mark, the show goes completely silent. Okay, what now? Ah! Did we just get trolled by Robotnik? Seriously, what was the point of a random long drawn out shot of Robotnik in a bikini? Why? Why do this to me, Sonic? And they just keep showing it throughout the episode. And the episode will just randomly drop any pretense of trying and completely ditch the background animation to either black or white. I guess to mix it up? Can't have all pastel white. Chuck some pitch black in there too. 
All of Sonic's friends are drowning in a sinking ship and we're watching a clip show. Even Scratch and Robotnik look bored. And the further we get into the episode, the thinner and thinner the animation budget gets. By the end, they've stopped bothering to individually colour each character, and each one only gets a sad two frames of animation. This is just impressive. Seriously. Imagine your dog walked over to the refrigerator, opened it, then peeled open and ate a whole wheel of cheese. I'm not even mad, I'm just impressed. Impressed. This is the pinnacle of the art form. This is taking not giving a crap to an entirely new and unexplored frontier. This is by far the lousiest, laziest, stupidest Sonic cartoon episode of them all. Go ahead, Robotnik. It's your party. Cry if you want to. But honestly, the amazing part about all these episodes is I personally still consider them canon to the Sonic universe. I like to imagine a world for Sonic where all these things did happen. A world where Sonic spins in his sleep. A world where Robotnik sets up fake celebration parties for Sonic. Where Sonic outright marries Robotnik. And then next year they fight in Robotropolis. And eventually, Sonic settles down on an island with his friends somewhere, casually fighting Eggman on Tuesdays. No matter how bad some episodes can be, it seems like nothing can erase that affectionate image of Sonic built into the minds of many. And I hope shows like Sonic Boom continue on for a long time, allowing old and new generations to enjoy Sonic again. And if you think I missed a particularly lousy Sonic cartoon episode, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.